Hey y'all, this is Corey with Everyday Man, doing everyday reviews for everyday people. And I know all you everyday guys out there have heard of the stupid tax. And if you haven't, you know what it is because you've probably paid the price. The stupid tax is when you do something stupid and now you gotta pay the price to fix it. And I'll show you what I'm talking about right after this. <laughs> Scratch that. Take two. Can-Am suggests you don't pull anything in reverse with your Defender. And I guess I should know that. Most people should know that. But I've never, never really had to pay a consequence for doing it before. I've had a Terex for years and pulled plenty of things backwards. Well, with the drive shafts that Can-Am puts in these machines, they're paperweight, thin, thin metal. This is what happens when you attempt to pull on something in reverse with a Can-Am Defender. This drive shaft twisted like a pretzel stick. So what I've done is I've gone and buy the Rhino driveline drive shaft with the Super ATV carrier bearing. And today I'm gonna attempt to install it. I'm gonna try and show you guys how to do it and film it the best I can. But please try not to pull anything in reverse with your Can-Am Defender. This drive shaft is not easy to get out. I didn't film it. I was, I was needless to say highly aggravated when it happened. I was ready to find out what was causing my machine to shake so violently. I thought at first it was an axle. And then when I saw this drive shaft in front of the motor, it, it just rolling over, I knew immediately was it, what it was. So I started taking it apart right away. Now it's taken a few days to get the parts in. I've calmed down a bit. So now I'm gonna try and show you guys how to install this new Rhino drive shaft in your Can-Am Defender. So let's give it a shot. Our carrier bearing comes pre-assembled. Four Allen head screws. We're simply gonna take those out and we can get our hands on the bearing. Now the rear drive shaft is the shorter one. What we're gonna wanna do is clean up this shaft and drive this bearing onto the shaft. So the first thing we're gonna do is I've got some carb cleaner we're just gonna spray down this, this bare metal surface and on the inside of the bearing as well. And we're just gonna get that as clean as we can, get any grease or any foreign materials out of it that we can. And what we're gonna wanna do is the kit comes with blue and green Loctite. So we wanna put, we wanna make sure it's dry. We wanna put the green around the shaft itself. Cut this little tip off. Looks like I need to sharpen my knife. There we go. So we're gonna apply the green sealant or, or holder liberally, liberally, boy, that's a good word, on this shaft. And then we're gonna kinda spread it around with our fingers. Make sure we got a good even coat around it. Now our bearing has some Allen head set screws in it. And I believe from what I can tell with the instructions is they're gonna go towards the back of the machine. So now what we're gonna try and do is pound this on. So I've got a piece of pipe that fits the race of the bearing. And we're gonna try and get it on. And we want the bearing seated all the way down to the base of the shaft.
and we're getting there. And we're there. I'm just gonna make sure it's all the way home, and it is. So we've got a set of Allen heads to retain this shaft. So let's go ahead and tighten those down. All right. We can see that the bearing is flush against the back of the shaft. This is gonna to go towards the rear, this is looking to the rear of the machine. So what we're gonna do is there's a machine surface on this carrier bearing. And that machine surface is where the bearing will sit. So we're gonna install that. And the Super ATV logo is gonna go towards the front. Now the hard part about this is this carrier, ba carrier bearing sits on top of the mounting bolts and you gotta screw it in from the top. And you can't get to the top of them from the floor to the fender. You would think you can, but I tried to remove all the floor and you just can't get to it. So you actually gotta go in from the bottom. Now another important thing to remember is when we put this together, this goes towards the front, this hardware goes toward the front and it bolts and that's what holds it to the front differential. Now we have our U-joint facing up right here. We're gonna have to turn this one 90 degrees out. So it'll go in just like this. And that's gonna balance it. So let's see if we can get you down below underneath this thing and, and try and get this thing put in. Okay, my microphone went out while I was trying to do this, so I'm gonna narrate what's going on. Now, luckily for me, I have put 33s and a two inch lift kit on my bike. That way I can get my big self under here without trying to flip this thing over. Super ATV suggests flipping it on its side, but I didn't have any means to do that. So we're gonna start at the rear machine. The, the camera's facing the rear of the machine. The first thing we wanna do is get the rear drive shaft aligned on the splines. Now the rear drive shaft, because it's not in four wheel drive, spins freely, or the rear spline. So you have to hold the spline in place and then slide the rear drive shaft into place, which is really simple. So at that point, we take the bottom of our carrier bearing and we're gonna put it in place. That way we can support the front of our drive shaft. Now, the Super ATV carrier bearing has a machine side and then just a regular finished side. The machine side will go over the bearing itself and the Super ATV logo will go towards the front of the machine. Now we're gonna attempt to put this front drive shaft in and it is quite long and it's relatively heavy and it's kind of hard to do by yourself. So you're gonna see I attempt to line up the, spline, the splines and I can't get it done from way back here. So I'm gonna get really up close and personal with this camera here shortly. Now with a little bit of wiggling and working, once the splines light up, line up, the drive shaft will simply just slide right into place. But it does take a little work to get them lined up. It 
it is a little bit of work trying to get it done, but once it gets lined up, it will simply slide in. So now we have to remember to ensure that the, the U-joints on the non-moving part, the, the solid part, are 100, uh, 90 degrees out of phase with each other. And you can see we remove the carrier bearing, drop it down, and we can easily slide the splines together. And I'm going to look at it and realize it's not exactly 90 degrees like I wanted. So I'm going to remove it and start over, which is really easy. It's not at all hard to do. These splines are all brand new. They slide together really easily. And you can easily turn the rear drive shaft because the machine is not in four wheel drive. So get it just how you want and we'll replace the carrier bearing and we'll start to assemble that. Now, because of the design of this bike, you have to work on everything from the bottom and everything bolts in from the top. So it is a pain to get it all put together, but it's not complicated. So we're gonna go ahead and fast forward through this part. I'll put on a little tune. So at this point, we have our carrier bearing installed and put together, and we're going to shoot some grease into it. There is a grease dirt on top of the bearing. And now we're gonna install the hardware on the front end of the drive shaft. So I'm gonna turn the camera for you guys to see what we're doing here. And this is really pretty easy as well. What you're gonna to have to do is put your bike in neutral. That way you can orientate the hardware 
on the drive shaft so you can actually fit a wrench and get into it. And it'll take a little bit of wiggling and a little bit of figuring, but once you do, it's relatively easy. The drive shaft is now installed, and the drive shaft is really not hard to get in the machine. Um, the carrier bearing, on the other hand, is in a really awkward situation. Having to access it from the bottom and install all the hardware from the top makes it very, I'm not going to say difficult, but it makes it very aggravating to do. It would have been very nice if Can-Am could have put some sort of access cover over the carrier bearing so you can access it. And with this, this Super ATV carrier bearing, it does have a grease cert on it, so there is some maintenance to it. So I will have to get to it from time to time. And with that being said, the skid plates are riveted in place. And those are really a pain. You gotta drill them out every time. So I will be going back with some self-drilling screws. But so the way I knew that this thing had a bent drive shaft was above 15 to 20 miles an hour, it would begin to shake violently. And I knew something was very broken with this machine. So all that's left to do is take you guys for a ride. So let's go for a ride and we'll come back and we'll do a wrap. I know this video is getting a little bit long, but I did see that there were no videos online on how to do it. And I wanted to, to put this out there to maybe help you guys, maybe show you guys maybe a trick or two that, that you can use. So let's go for a ride. Let's go for a ride. Let's go get this thing up above 25 miles an hour. <coughs> Excuse me. And see if uh, see if it's smooth. See if we helped it out. Taking it very easy on it. Well, I think it's safe to say that it was indeed only the drive shaft. I was a bit nervous that I had potentially damaged a differential or the transmission itself. But I'm not feeling any vibrations. 
at 21, 25. Now it feels very good. So what we're gonna do with this stop sign, I'm gonna lock the rear differential and I'm gonna put it in four wheel drive and I'm gonna make sure that, that everything stays very calm. Right now we only have it in one wheel drive. So we're gonna lock the rear differential and put it in four wheel drive, smart lock. Okay, everything feels good. take it out of four-wheel drive and open up that rear differential and we'll get it back to the house Let's go ahead and wrap this video. I'm not sure why Can Am decided to use nothing much more than a paperweight for the drive shaft in their heavy duty HD10 XMR. But what I am sure of is don't pull and reverse on it because it will twist and turn. Now this new Rhino drive shaft went in relatively easily. Like I said, I wish they could have done a few things different with the carrier bearing. Now, upon acceleration in four wheel drive, I can I can feel like a low frequency vibration to it, I guess. And I really believe it's just because there's more of a turning mass. And I did get back under there and check and make sure that I had the U-joints 90 degrees out from each other, which I did. So um, it's not a big issue. You can feel a little vibration in the floor of accelerating a four-wheel drive. Um, but that's about it. I do think they're gonna be a lot tougher. I will have a description, uh, uh, a link in the description for the, the drive shafts and it comes with the carrier bearings. But I can assure you, it can be done. It's a little bit of a pain, but uh, don't pull in reverse. So guys, if you liked the video, please consider giving me a thumbs up and subscribing. And until next time, I'll see y'all on Everyday Man.